EU leaders have adopted a declaration, as I mentioned earlier, on how to manage migration and save lives along that central Mediterranean route. This comes after an informal summit in the Maltese capital, Valletta, on Friday. Now, prior to the meeting, the EU foreign policy chief, Federica Mogherini, said there were differences between the EU's approach to migration compared to that of the US president, Donald Trump, who has, of course, espoused this extreme vetting policy. Libya's Prime Minister, Fayez Saraj, also highlighted cooperation as the best way to tackle the irregular flow of migrants from Libya's shores right into Europe. We have underlined the necessity of the cooperation between Libya and the EU to better control the southern borders of Libya and this flux of migrants. We also talked about the necessity to reinforce security and to put an end to human trafficking, and we also discussed all these in details. This memorandum of agreement constitutes a start, and we continue to work in the future to fight against this burden that's affecting us. Let's get the latest details on that particular agreement and what it means, of course, for migration in future. Mariam Zaidi is live tonight with the latest on this story. And Mariam, IOM data does indicate a fairly steep reduction in the number of people who get to Europe's shores, at least in the first 33 days of the year, 5,932 for 2017, compared to over 67,000 for the same period last year. That's a pretty big drop. What caused it? Hi, Rama. Well, one of the things that possibly, definitely, you could say has caused this is a deal with Turkey that has cut down arrivals into Europe on the eastern Mediterranean route by 98%. Also, we could say that the harsh winter could be one of the reasons for the reduction. Arrivals could possibly then increase once, of course, summer arrives. And that's why European leaders have put this summit together so it can react ahead of that and put a plan in place to stop migrant flows, especially along the central Mediterranean route. And so the deal with Libya, of course, is then central to that aim. Indeed. Um, given the instability we're seeing in Libya, Turkey-style deal with the North African state isn't possible to replicate. So what is the next best alternative from the EU's view? Well, if we look at Libya, the rule of law is barely functioning. Libya has a tribal culture and smuggling of migrants is big business. The average price for a single crossing is between $500 and $1,000. The EU is essentially delegating the handling of migration to Libya, a country that hasn't signed the Geneva Convention on Refugees. Oxfam has called it a death blow to Europe as champions of human rights. But speaking at the press conference held just a few hours ago, the Maltese Prime Minister Joseph Muscat, whose country was pushing strongly for this deal with Libya, said he understands the pitfalls of this deal, but the goal is to stop smugglers and traffickers and stop people risking their lives. And then the next phase will be then to help people come to Europe safely. Indeed. One last question for you. The French president uh, argued a little earlier that European governments need to avoid their reliance on Washington. But the question then becomes, do the EU27 by themselves have the long-term military power and political will to actually continue with these regular patrols in the Mediterranean? Well, the French President François Hollande spoke just a few hours ago following the session on migration, and he said that Europe needs to be united to face the new Trump order, even if a few EU countries share his approach or mindset. Hollande showed also an understanding that the EU needs to take care of defence via NATO and added that France will increase its position by being the only EU country once, of course, the UK exits to have nuclear capacity in NATO. So a big EU country there showing their will on defence. And in answer to your question, yes, the EU collective has a military capacity in the Mediterranean. You know, we just need to look at Operation Sophia, the EU's flagship mission on migration that has saved 30,000 lives and arrested almost 100 smugglers. The Garibaldi aircraft carrier is the centerpiece in the EU's battle to fight human trafficking and smugglers. Its ships and helicopters patrol the international waters between Italy and Libya. Now, it does, though, remain to be seen if EU countries will ramp up their defence spending to meet the 2% NATO target. But the EU at this Valletta summit is starting a sort of reactivation of sorts. It wants to be is seen as a big player on the world stage. Indeed, let's see how that plays out. Thank you for that. That's Miriam Zaidi, of course, live with more details on that story.